It's the it's a slow pace kind of style, but it's his it's his new changes which just make him so good. So it's the heroes that will then synergize with him as well. This is where like when we had the tiny and morphlings actually coming together in this brutal combination. Uh, you give him the tree buff up, and then it's amazing how much damage you do while you're in the middle of waveform. So I think uh, these one positions, which can play a little bit slower in the early stage, but can still escape from the early ganks and the early pressure that comes in the lane, are going to be like the critical things here uh, teams will push for. So it's interesting you mentioned that. I'm not even sure Morphling is that slow anymore. That no mana cost on his morph, he just looks so much more effective to me oh, shit. before the Lincoln's. Oh, but, oh, here we go. That's wow, smile. you want to talk it's about over. lane bullies. <laughs> Undying coming out from VP with the first pick. What do you think about this, Blitz? I think the idea is that if you take a hero like Tide or Omni, uh, strength-based heroes, you just decay and trade hits, and it's one of the better ways to deal with those heroes. So I think Virtus Pro is already anticipating like Tide or Omni. Uh, so Navi oh. goes the other way. They take Shaman first. They take their five, which is pretty interesting, but uh, doesn't say like too much about either side so far. This is what they did in, you, you talk about the Adrenaline Cyber League, Cyber League, Na'Vi won that series against First Pro three to one, eight days ago. And in three out of those four drafts, they picked the Seneco Shadow Shaman up in the first phase. It gives them that strong pushing presence from the support position. Really felt to me like it stabilized the rest of their draft. Yeah. yeah. I watch that uh, series every night before bed. I make sure to get one Adrenaline Cyber League match in uh, so I can have the sweetest of dreams. And here we go, Sand King picked up as a... Oh! What? They got the spider. Okay. First, Talk to me, smart people. First what? Face Brood Mother? Look at them laughing. Yeah, they think this Was that a misclick or is this a series a joke to them? No, uh, I, I think this is like... Because uh, the thing about this hero is... You keep thinking that there are ways to deal with it, and people just get more and more creative on how to play her, because it's not based on your broodlings or your spiderlings so much. And as long as you get rid of some of the heroes like Sven, especially Sven, then you're okay Ten playing this. And it it also puts like the pressure on the enemy team. But this is really different than all the picks that we saw Ten at uh, Perfect World, which is like kind of my basis for things. Yeah. I don't know, understand, Brew. Can you guys like explain how people play that now? It's you said it's not about the spiderlings anymore, and it to me has always been this big split pusher guy. But now it, she's more fighty now, right? It's all about just murdering people. Uh, she's like ultra tempo based. You yeah. need you need to create tempo with her, and what that means is you grab towers and you just have to keep transitioning with that hero. Like you need to go from one objective to another. If you stop or you lose momentum, this hero feels pretty bad because uh, it's very you have to fight her on your webs. It's not easy to allow her to fight late game because she doesn't have a ton of mobility. Like, she moves fast, but that's about it. Mm. She doesn't have a natural stun. She doesn't have an incredible burst. Oftentimes, you get BKB early on. Sure. So if you go later on in the game, you have a five-second BKB, you die in, like, two seconds. Mm -hmm. You're not like some Sven that, like, jumps in, throws out a stun, and then, like, whacks people three hits, they're dead. You just get consistent damage off. So when your BKB starts to get lower, your hero falls off. So you need to get the first and the second Roshan and try to get at least a set of racks by that point. Well, it makes a lot of sense to pair it up with the Undying then. Go ahead. Well, one thing we actually did see with uh, the Broodmother in Shanghai was the fact that teams were actually trying to really deal with her by having better lockdown. Like, we saw Newbie actually picking Batrider up every single time they thought a Brood was going to arrive, just so they get the flying vision and the, and the straight lockdown. Things like VS didn't do enough of a job. So I'm wondering if that's also what, what VP are looking for. Like, Blitz is right with the whole tempo kind of style, but how does Na'Vi now approach this game when you've got SK Sharma up at the very start, they've got some lockdown against the brood, but vision is not going to be on their side. Mm. So how do they battle this brood to just chase and keep up with it? We've still got calls to come up, but that's what I'm interested to see how they go with their draft. Mag, Sven taken out, the clearance the guys just like empower buff up. This makes it too easy to deal with the brood. So that all makes sense. But how does Navi do it? How does Navi lock down the brood and then still be able to deal with the other calls? 21st time that Brood has been picked in this patch. She does have a 65% win rate. This is the first time this patch that she's been picked in the first phase. I think they're about half a dozen times in the last patch uh, after TI, and I think like more than half of those were liquid. So this is very, very unusual. Uh -huh. You saw, as Blitz was talking about, you saw the Sven and then the Magnus for the Empower get banned out by Virtus Pro to protect the Brood. I was going to ask you, what do you think Na'Vi can now do against it? Do you like Weaver against the Brood matchup? Uh, I just like Weaver as a hero right now. Like, I think this hero has a ton of mobility, works well. Disruptor. And he eats supports alive. 
Like the safe lane is very good, and you need to secure your safe lane, which I think Navi's doing with the Shaman plus Weaver. There's no off laner that works very well against that. Yes. But at the same time, like it's kind of curious because you can still match the Sand King against the Brood Mother. Like that's not a bad matchup whatsoever for you. Uh, are we actually thinking this is a little Weaver? Oh yeah, it's gotta like, be. Like no, can, wrong can team. Not Navi. Wrong team. Right? Yeah, wrong team. Uh, yeah, so, sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> other way around. I I don't think that. Navi do that a lot less often than VP um, in terms of running standard cores in the support role. Uh, more often what they do, the, their flex picks tend to work where they can run them in any of the three lanes. Like I said before with Tiny, that they've run Tiny, all three of their core players have played it in the last couple of months. Weaver kind of works the same way. They will put General on that hero as well as Crystallize. So it, there's both teams right now, you don't know what the lanes are going to look like, which is why I really like this draft from both sides so far. I'm not a big fan of VP's draft. I'll be I'll be real with you. The Dis Disruptor is a nice uh, counter to that Weaver or something, but where are their stuns? Where's the lockdown? Look at Na'Vi, how mobile all these heroes are. You got a Sand King, a Weaver, and a Timber Saw. Right now, their only way to make sure that they can get a kill is one Disruptor glimpse into an ultimate. I mean, that is not great. So unless VP really gets a little bit of lockdown here, I mean, I think Na'Vi's just going to be running all over them. Maybe you, I'm crazy. You've, you've still got your other two calls to come in. Like, it's... Uh, that, that lockdown is going to arrive. I'm more concerned about Na'Vi's lockdown. Like, you're going to get punished. So you want to you want to fight him to Virtus Pro, you have to commit. Like, you're coming under Tombstone, you're coming under under Disruptor Control. If you want to just bail out, you're going to get Glints back in again. And here is, like, Timbersaw like, against Magical Pop damage. If the Broodmother is able to get, like, Disable against the Timber, then I'm, I'm liking this draft more from Virtus Pro, but I want to see how they wrap up their final cause. Come on, dude. They, look at that, all the lockdown Navi has. They got Shadow Shaman. He's a lockdown master. He gets knocked during core. He literally locks you down indefinitely. Okay. They've got everything well, they need. What shamans do you see who were able to reach Nocturne? Hey, man. I mean, I've been there. I've seen the mid shaman meta. I've seen the future of 2027. I like the Timber Saw against the Brood Mother. This would have sort of been on my list of Brood Counters with the Sven and the Magnus, but this is the first time in the last three months that Navi have run Timber Saw in a professional game. So branching out a little bit. The OD, this is actually a hero that has been really good so far this patch. It's been uh, very effective in some of these matches, and of course, you love it against the Timber Saw. Yeah, it's one of the best or better counters to Timber, just because you eat through him. Uh, he dies in like five hits to your hero. He doesn't scale very well against the, the OD either. I was looking at like possible counters. I was thinking of like, I saw Gyro, as one, but it's a bit different because you don't go for the Rocket Barrage build anymore. So it's a little bit weaker. And so now we have to like make the decision of whether the Sand King is going to be core or not yep. and where this Timber is going. Like you need a better matchup against this OD though. So what I would do if I was Navi is I try to go like last pick Sniper. Yeah, yeah that's the classic. Then push Weaver to save Timber to off. Yeah, and then yeah. if I'm if I'm Virtus Pro, you have to lane most likely against Weaver, so I'm trying to think of like the heroes that. Yeah, one of the one of the things that I like about the OD pick is that since you still don't know whether the Sand King is core support, Navi could in theory have turned around and gone Winter Wyvern for their first pick. OD really punishes that because he can hit with the orb, he can kill you through the Cold Embrace. So they take Nyx. If I'm Navi here, I probably grab. I probably grab Sniper. Yeah, I or like Sniper a lot. If there's like normally, I would say there's like flex options for like Veno, but I think he gets wrecked by Brood in lane. And you have to avoid bad matchups at all costs. And Sniper's not even that bad if he had to do it. Like I would take I guess the, the the sort of standard pick, the safe pick would be Queen of Pain. I think Sniper DK is better. Okay. Here. Just because I think if you take one of these in cores, it's gonna be kinda rough to play against the disruptor in the Knicks. Templar Assassin. Templar. I, I don't know if okay. I agree with that. I mean, as we were talking about momentum and tempo here, VP, all their heroes, they got to have that tempo. Uh, OD that's coming in from behind is probably the worst hero in Dota. So I th think if Navi went for something a little bit more aggressive than Templar, it'd be a little easier. So I don't know. Well, boys, we got 10 heroes, two teams on the stage. Let me really quickly, before we go, let's get our predictions for this game one of the best of three series. Toby. Uh, got? I'm going to lock in with Virtus Pro. I think their laning phase is going to be a lot stronger and their timing is going to kick in a lot harder than Navi's. I'm going to go with Virtus Pro. I think that TA will probably have a good game, but she's also kind of brewed in that sense. I feel like uh, Navi's got this one. Not enough stuns on VP. 
I got to go with Virtus Pro because I think they're the better team right now. But man, I actually really like that Navi draft. I think t I think TA could really snowball mm -hmm. off this game. So, so what, what side of the fence are you on? I'm going to go VP. They have it right. Okay. Production's got our backs. I can't wait All to be right. right, you idiots. The teams are ready. The fans are ready. We hope you at home are ready. Let's send it off for our first game of the second Dota 2 Major of the season. Here are the voices of ROG Dream League Season 8, Odie, Pixel, and Fogged. Thank you very much, Nahaz and Indeed. We're getting ready for this first series, and what a series to kick off the Major, really. VP versus Na'Vi, and what a couple of drafts to do it with as well, Fog. We talked about maybe seeing something a little bit new, and I feel like both of these teams, they've turned up today, they've got a strategy. I mean, we saw the faces of VP when they second picked the Broommother. Yeah. And the Na'Vi with these responses as well. It's, it's very hard to predict what's going to happen here. It is interesting, and we get OD. I mean, we haven't seen too much of this here either, but it is it is a very good OD game. There's no silences, really. There's only the, there's a minimal disable from Shadow Shaman. And, I mean, Shadow Shaman and Sang can have good disables, but they don't have these silences, which are the big counters to OD. OD, once he gets BKB, he can really go absolutely rampant in this game. And yeah, VP. Second pick, Brood. Yeah. They're trying to do some kind of like, some uh, like trick the opponents here. Look, you see, they set up two webs in the mid lane to make it look like that Brood's going to go mid versus TA. And we'll do a, do a quick rundown of who's playing what. Well, of course, Ramses will be on the Brood for VP. And we're going to have Solo on his signature Disruptor supporting no one in the mid lane on OD. Bottom lane is going to be Pasha at the moment. Looks like they're going to try and get him in a 1v1 down there. And of course, last but not least, Lil on the Undying. Over on the side of Na'Vi, Seneko. He'll be roaming around on the Shadow Shaman. Crystallize on that Core Weaver. Roger making the plays happen today on the Sand King. Dendi on the... The TA and last the but not least, begins. once again, Navi General. He's looking to get big, looking to go ham on the Timber Sword. Tries for the bounty runes still, but he's not going to be able to grab it. Oh and my both teams will get two each. Looks like the mind games are going to work for VP. They're sending Roger mid, it looks like, with the sinking because they think Rude's going to be mid, and they're sending TA top because they think it's going to be some like some Nyx assassin up there, but. VP is going to come out very hard ahead in this. They're going to have to swap the lanes up right away. All right, so, yeah, so let's have Roger was get, just getting the block. So the, okay, so yep, then, General in the middle. So General versus the Brood, but okay. there's an OD on dying. He needs to get out of there. He's, I think he's realized. He said, this is not the lane for me, and General's making the walk right up to that top lane, right up to the Broommother lane. So we could end up seeing a bit of musical lanes going on here. We'll see which team uh, decides to stop making the moves first. Indeed, they just want to get Dendi away from this lane. He does have a bit of support with him at the moment. He's going to TP as soon yeah. as the Timbersaw gets up there. Make a bit of a go onto the Brood. And then onto Ramsey's done quite a bit of a damage here. Yep. Uh, Ramsey's will back up, turns around with the CS, but indeed, as you say, General's up here, Dendi. Almost certainly will look to, to move towards the mid lane. Seneco's loving life. I mean, this is the quickest he's, he's ever hit level two. He's got a mid lane to himself on that Shadow Shaman. Yep, and in there. there's, there's the trade. Dendi's now in on the mid lane. Uh, but of course, there's a bit of a time where he's, he's going to be a little bit behind. No one has been sharing experience with Lil, by the looks of it. But he's a little ahead. Seneco's going to stick around and try and help. Uh, Dendi in this lane, but this lane does not look to be an easy one for Na'Vi. No, definitely not. Especially when Snake already out of mana as the Shadow Shaman. So ideally you want to be able to harass back the Undying with that Shadow Shaman, spamming your Aether Shock and your Heavy Right Clicks, but no mana left on him. VP should be able to come out quite ahead in this laning phase, uh, mid lane at least. No, absolutely, especially with those, those movements that VP have been able to force, leaving uh, no one in a position where he's 7 for 3 up against Dendi's 1 for 1 due to these movements. But it's a TA. There's a lot of ways they can catch up with that. We'll see sure. how well uh, Na'Vi are able to keep uh, on top of the Ancient stacks. But especially in this patch, with, with sort of the importance of, of Ancient stacking and such, I wouldn't be surprised if we see VP try and do their best to contest it, to block it, at, at least try and stop Dendi from getting that catch-up farm in the later portions of the game. Yeah, and they have great ways to invade. With Nyx Assassin having safe lane, he's going to get level 6 super early. Suneko going for a TP out. There is no Glimpse skilled. Solo has Kinetic Field and Thunderstrike. So yeah, Pasha should get a very early level 6, and they should be able to contest those Ancients quite heavily with the side of VP. Up top, as expected, General. Loving life up here. Yep. Gonna have to wrap around from Roger. Coming in onto Ramses, but other than the Burrow Strike, no, no further control. But that lane, certainly gonna be a tricky one for the Spider. Na'Vi definitely finding the matchup that they want there. Down bottom, Crystallize. What's he doing at the moment? Six for zero. He's doing okay. Yeah, he's gonna suffer a bit, because he's versus a dual lane. And he's an off he's an off lane weaver. It's a yeah. bit it's a bit troublesome. I think what VP is trying to go for here is with the Broodmother, there's just like, okay, this is the distraction. We pick this first two Brood, it's going to really throw off the game plan of what Na'Vi wants to do, and then they're going to have to adjust to us, and then they get these favorable other lanes. The OD versus the TA, and then the Nyx in the safe lane versus the Weaver. But Pasha, yeah, he's going to have a great time down here. He's going to have a great game overall because of this. Crystallize trying to put on the pressure, uh, with Roger coming down as well on the Sand King. 
Mid lane, Dendi, he's catching up. Suneko's been able to sort of secure the state of the lane. Yep. And uh, especially with, I believe, Lil wandering around, getting the runes and such. Uh, yes. Giving space for the TA to catch up. TA should definitely still get a decent amount of last hits versus an OD. It's just once the levels start kicking in and you get bullied a bit more by the Arcane Orb, I mean, then you, you have to resort to Ancient. Top lane, great. as you say, a, d a distraction strategy uh, perhaps being the plan for, for VP, but it's... It's definitely a very painful one. Yeah. General is able to play incredibly aggressive here. And, uh, I mean, as you say, this this almost, almost certainly is just the plan from VP. They know that they, if they send a hero up here, it's not going to change anything. General's still going to be pretty invincible yeah. on this Timbersaw. It's a it's a, the, like the super heavy favorite yeah. Timbersaw matchup. You really can't do anything as a Broodmother versus this, except just get your own farm. You can't really trade hits, you just prioritize hitting creeps. But at the same time, you know, this Timbersaw, he's 26 for 3, he is going to be massive in the mid game. Yeah. It is a lot of spiders. Sure. That's the one thing. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, a lot of stuff. Because he's only 50, CS. he's 50 gold ahead of the Knicks, okay. and he's got 8 more last hits. So, yeah, it's, it's quite a lot of spiders. Pasha. Pasha's actually forced out of bottom lane entirely. Mid. I mean, Dendi. He's in some trouble here. Very close there, indeed, with that Astral. They set him up for an easy first bug. Coming a little too close to the tower. You, you, you can't do that with the Astral in play. More than enough time to buy for TPs to come through. And, you know, you send a disruption into the mix and they have more than enough catch to, to hold him underneath that tower. Dendi has to has to tone back that sort of aggression in that matchup. Great teamwork by VP. Yeah. Just recognizing that. The instant TP by Solo and by Lil to join in to take out Dendi. So Lil, the nice thing, this interaction that they have between uh, Undying and Brood, they're going to always have the Spiderlings for the soul rip damage, so he's okay. going to be leveling that one up a bit. And then later on, we've talked about this a couple times, is uh, Tombstone with Disruptor. Tombstone gives 1,800 vision That's a lot during vision. nighttime and daytime, so it should be able to give Solo a lot of the opportunity to get those glimpses off in later stages. Bottom, Crystallize, like I was mentioning, Pasha got kind of forced out from the Raja rotations, and Crystallize has now picked up on hey. Now Pasha's in Make, some trouble. Indeed, making a bit of a go. He's got the Spike Carapace, turns around with the stun. Quick Shikuchi from Crystallize, jukes it out, and he'll continue to beat down onto Pasha. Roger as well with the chase down. One more touch will do it. Pasha, can he keep himself alive? He cannot. Roger has the Burrow Strike back up, goes in for the kill. Same time though, Lil actually able to bring down General on that top lane. Mid lane, Dendi falling low. Quick Shackle holding back no one from chasing him down, so he'll escape. So this top lane, we didn't get to see it because the action was going down bottom at the same time, but I can only imagine that combo that you talked about uh, probably was yeah. what warranted the kill there. We can see the like in the quick fight recap. Yeah. I was waiting for it to reload. He did 327 damage as Undying, and it was a big soul rip and a decay. Yeah. So definitely playing into a factor there. Just that heavy magic damage versus Timber is nice. Dyer's top tower is under uh, Dendi now actually going back into the jungle and uh, just trying to get some stacks up and, and go for the neutrals. As you're realizing that mid lane is it's only getting scarier and scarier now that the supports of VP do have those levels. I think Roger just tried to stack the right ancient camp and it was it's nighttime, so they're sleeping, so he didn't actually get there in time. Oops. Oh, Seneca. Let's go for the quick TP out. He's going to take quite a bit of damage on the way out. And General comes through. He does have the level six. Looks for the Chakram onto Ramses. Ramses keeping himself away. Also trying to, to continuously farm up those spiderlings. Bottom, slow, slow, quick, but the glimpse trying to peel Roger away from him. Roger is going to try and continue to chase. The slow from the caustic proc. It's getting kind of close. Solo will be fine, though. No one's coming coming over, making sure that Roger can't get through. Actually, Roger, he's gone for the sneaky way around. Is he going to continue the chase? He's thinking about it. Or oh, if he was a little quicker, he may have got it. But Solo will be able to get himself back down the mid lane and, and back to safety. Solo still had one charges, too. I think oh, he would have okay. been okay, but... Yeah, Roger, I think Roger noticed that there's a ward there from that movement, though, because when he was harassing yeah. Solo on the high ground there, I saw Seneco pinging that area nonstop. So I think that ward that uh, I up top. VP has is going to get Roger, deported. coming in with a quick burrow strike. They didn't expect that one, VP, for the SK to, to sort of go from chasing down the disruptor in the middle lane to wrap around on the top. Roger may pay of his life, comes back in with a burrow strike. General is there to back him up with the chakra, and they're bringing Ramses down low. The spiders continue to chase, Ooh. but Roger, he's got the sandstorm. Lil comes in, one more decay will do it, does manage to find the SK kill. General may be in trouble as well, actually. They've got that tombstone down, Thunderstrike as well with a vision. It's just a level one glimpse. Let's see Solo, can he get himself in range? There we have it, peels him back into the field. Oh, times it perfectly as well, so there's no timber chain. The timing there on the glimpse, the same time as the chain came out, so there was no escape for General. VP's invading so hard up top. Look at this, even Pasha's now joining the fray. He has Arcane Boots, has level six. Oh, he is ready to come in with that Vendetta hit. Roger, is he going to expect it? Put their eyes on him with the decay. Sandstorm as well, but sentries pop down. They've got the vision, Thunderstrikes out onto him. No catch. 
Oh, they get a D ward as well. Close with snuffle. That. Roger coming back in with the bow strike. We'll get the deny on the D ward. He says, You want that? You're not having it. Nice play there. Stops them from getting that extra bit of gold. Invisibility. And uh, we'll get out. But as you say, a VP starting to make big movements as a team. They've got the Ryzen General. General did not expect Pasha to be still up here. I mean, I, I guess he didn't expect him to be up there at all. He was yet to reveal himself with that level six and the patience of Pasha paying off. They get another Timbersaw kill. So much magic damage burst between Nyx, Undying, and with all those spider links. You see, actually, look at the look at the Undying skill build. This is the, this is why they did the that max combo. Rip. Max soul rip for those abuse, abusing the spider. I mean, this is damage. this is why VP were laughing. Yeah. When they picked the brood, it's they knew that they had damage. this combo. A combo that I mean, you picked up on it straight away, but I don't think we have we really seen people do this combo before in competitive. Uh, don't think so too much now. So bottom though, you know, you look at the last hits though, and it's it's not like Navi's out of it by any means. It's a no. five to two in kills, but they are farming very well in their lanes. Crystallize has been left alone for the majority of this, and yeah, Dandy's been doing really nicely as well. Yeah, he's up there, very high in the CS. So the calls are going to be big. VP's game plan. I mean, it was always expected that theirs was going to come online a little earlier, and we'll see how Navi can react to it. They're trying to make it go in on bottom. Seneca just holding this man back, trying to get the space for the tower, but Lil also able to get the deny, as well as VP getting that kill. So VP getting the most out of that. Tower's still down at the end of the day, but they make sure that they, they still find a good trade for it. Crystallize is going for solo bottom. He's trying to go for this solo kill here. He might be able to just get him uh, too. They're trying to hold him back at the kinetic field solo. Can he get himself out? He cannot. Crystallize quick with the time lapse as well. Will escape. Navi starting to get some kills of their own, and uh, this is all the plan. Just make the space for Dendi to find that Deso in peace over his half of the jungle. Yeah, it's a nice game for Crystallize until the, the level six comes out for Disruptor, and if he's not like if he's not getting stalked by Nyx Assassin Disruptor, he pretty much has like free range. Oh, Roger. He's found an opening straight in onto the spider. Oh, no, the shackles onto the spiders. There was a lot of them there. Zaneko couldn't quite find the grab, and with that, there's no setup for General to, to get any follow-through damage. They just have to back up and run. Jackron's thrown down, slowing down no one. Won't be able to find the Astral, so General and the boys will get out there. Maybe questionable if they would have actually got the kill if the Shackles was on target. Probably, probably to be fair, with the Timbersaw damage. Uh, but it could have also baited them into sticking around a little longer, and VP was certainly ready to fight up there. Yeah, Broodmother already with the Desolator finished up. So he was versus that Timbersaw matchup, but picking himself up a couple kills. Nice right, top net worth. Top net worth. And Dendi, as we mentioned, we saw there, farming up a triple stack. And now VP. They're trying to get oh, aggressive on mid. Oh, He has got to back up. They're, look, they're actually stalking for Dendi. They're warding the Ancients as well. So they're trying to find this TA. Oh, Seneco. Seneco's just getting ran down. Yeah, one more touch might do it. They've got the trap slow to hold him back. Pasha solo. Lil, they're surrounding Seneco. They'll take down one. Pasha with the patience again, not revealing himself. Ready to turn and fight for more. Roger tries to go with the burrow strike. The tombstone is down. Dendi's there as well. Looking towards solo. He'll take down the disruptor. Crystallize turning up the fight as well. Navi looking to turn this one. Pasha falling low. The physical from Dendi's enough to get the kill. Double kill for Dendi on the TA. Lil trying to get himself out. No one's going to be left Behind. The setup is there for Dendi to pick up the triple. Navi this time ready to hit back at their own tower. Quick responses from Navi. They had Dendi in the area. Everybody Absolutely else starts TPing perfect in. Navi. VP, I thought no one actually like had his ulti skilled up because he was just hitting so many times. And I was like, okay, he's starting to build up the int, but he's only level eight, so he doesn't have that ready there. It and all got a little bit awkward there for VP. I mean, that you saw yeah. they, they, they get the Shaman kill. You know that they want to look around for more, but as soon as that kill's been attempted for, Na'Vi know that they have to send the full forces in. They know that VP's not going to be walking around as, uh, as sort of a, a two-man or a three-man. It is going to be the full five-man each and every time. Yeah, and Crystallize had a good timing there. It was his level 10, so he gets that mana break talent as well, so his damage starts increasing quite heavily. And the, the levels on Na'Vi are distributed better. You look at the supports, they're level 7 sanking, level 6 shadow summon. Well, we look at the disruptor, still level 5, and dying just hit 6. So. It's a very poor shaman, though, bless him. Yeah. Uh, Win lace and a TP. And that's the freebie TP as well, I think. <laughs> Actually, no, he's probably picked he's that one up, but, yeah. Seneko, he, do he doesn't need money. He's got all the skill in the world. So that's that's pretty pretty big uh, advantage there coming out for Navi though. They now are getting closer to the death on TA. Roger's getting close to that blink dagger too, which is going to help a lot in their catch department, which they didn't have the greatest like sinking and rust sinking and shadow shaman can, but closing the gap as those heroes is a bit tough from time to time. Roger picking up some low XP in the mid. They've got a sentry there, but hard to to back away in the. Yeah, 1,500 or so towards the, the Blink Dagger on the SK. They spotted Crystallize. They're looking for the play. They have it's a hard the Disruptor catch. ult, but yeah. It's very tough to grab him out. 
I mean, if there ever was a disruptor player to, to be able to catch a Weaver, it would be solo, but it's not to say that it, it it's easy. So a bit of the awkward thing that we do, we can say for a VP is that they don't really have the greatest lane push. I know like, Will, especially, he's a big, you know, the shoving the lanes. He loves saying that, people know that, but it is a big factor because you look at their heroes, it's like, who really shoves the lanes out on the side of VP to make space for this Nyx Assassin to roam? So it's really tough, it's really kind of obvious when they are making these moves on top. coming in full force onto General. Now we'll come in and they'll also, also be able to farm up the wards that were dropped. Nice an echo. Tower down, but again, Na'Vi having to pay the price for that sort of a push. Yeah. Solo, let's look for Roger. He's got the ulti as well. Oh, he's got the catch indeed. And Setting up for Pasha, comes in with the follow through stun. And Roger, he's got the sick charges. He does have the sandstorm. He's going to have Purse Drive back up in a second. Oh, it's not quite soon enough. Right click from Solo seals the deal. Roger's out. Tendi, I believe it's has he got the completed Deso on its way out. It is coming out already. All right, there Very we go. good timing. And then down towards the mid lane though, they've got the grab. Oh, and a Lil. tombstone. Yeah, indeed, that's more money in the bank for Na'Vi. I'll take that as well, says General. See General's build. Went for a uh, Vanguard. I haven't seen that in a long time. I mean, I guess against the Brood, it's like, yeah, Crimson Guard and stuff oh, yeah. later on could be Radiant's could be an interesting pick up there. All right. right. I think OD is the bigger problem, though, like for, for the... Uh, sure, I mean, they're, they're the Timber Saw's already pretty strong against the Brood, but... Yeah, mid lane. Just see. Solo again making the plays. A lot of quick grabs from this Disruptor, setting up for easy kills for VP. It's really up to... Yeah, it's really up to Solo and Pasha just to make the plays for his team, because everybody else is just kind of these idle farmers, and Undying just kind of walks in and has makes play happen from that. Rush isn't going to be on the menu anymore, but Ramsey did threaten it. And then the, uh, he has taken the attack speed, so not plus Sionic Traps. He will, maybe, we'll see if he takes the damage later on, because the level 10 one, attack speed's much better, but the level 15 one, we have seen the traps come into play. I was seeing as well there, one thing that's going to be really nice about the traps these games is you put them by a tower, it makes it pretty much impossible for the Brood to push. Anytime he tries to push with the Broodlings, if the trap hits him, it's going to kill all the Broodlings they every time. They have extremely high magic resist. Is it enough? I saw a few die in the pit there. They did, they did, okay. Maybe the smaller ones, maybe yeah. The we'll smaller we'll ones. see, yeah, you're, you're, yeah. See how it works out. The maths. If he does indeed take the plus damage, it might. It might be able to once he gets the. It's a lot of damage. Yeah. It is a lot of damage. Because it's a 350 magic right now, and the spider links have 250 health with 50% yeah. magic resist. So. It's gonna be. It's gonna, gonna be, be close. close. Yeah. Top. They yeah, find Andy. Just get grabbed in. Tombstone down as well. He'll turn. He'll try and fight and take Solo with him. And he. Quick save from no one. We'll make sure that VP lose nothing for that. They're going right into the pit. Yeah. This Stage is. Stage behind. activated by the brood. Blink Dagger's there on Sanking. Now the question is if he can come over in time and do some incredible play. But VP, and he may he may be able to. Yeah, VP don't necessarily take this the quickest. Sure, they can take it safe with those spiders in there, but it's not. Yeah, they've got to back away. Crystallize on the sidelines. Already picked up one. He's gonna pay with his life though. Quick stand as he's eclipsed from no one. It means that the crystallizes play there is not not the best. Losing his life for a support. Yeah, no, not the that trade was. that they wanted, and they can't get these trades to, to VP because no one's suddenly catching back up. He was a little bit behind after that that misplay. They, they sort of went for as a team in the mid lane earlier, but now he's second highest in the net worth, and uh, he is going to be punching. Dragon Lance uh, ready to get shipped out to him. Yeah, he's very close to that Hurricane Pike. Yeah. And then, yeah, Blink has already finished on Pasha, and, but it, this is like... This is what I was mentioning before. It's a little bit awkward because now Pasha has to be that lane pusher. You see him in bottom lane pushing out as a Nyx assassin. So they're like, okay, Nyx is on the map. They feel a lot safer when they're playing like this as Navi. So they do have to watch out for when he does this. Whenever he disappears off the map, they're gonna, they have to feel very threatened. Oh, look up top. They want to make a catch. They're going to go for the, the easier one. Grabbing him, Roger. Dragging him back. And they look towards General as well, but General he is out there with the timber chain. Navi coming in in mass, mass numbers. They have four heroes ready to return fight. So is VP though, Pasha's up top two. Yeah, no, we've got to be careful about getting caught out again. Pasha, looking to close. They have the glimpse. They, they can catch one of these. They'll look towards Dendi. They'll get him just on the tip of the glimpse, back into the kinetic field, solo again. He may pay with his life, but he is absolutely making the trades that are worth it. They even dropped the Serpent Wars for Solo, but Solo, he may even get out. Surely they can't save him, no. He will go down, but again, the rest of Navi are held back, and Solo, he's making these plays, and it's absolutely worth it each and every time. Getting Dendi like that. I they force they force Serpent Wars yeah. away from the tower. To, like, that as any well. Towers. That's, I, mean, I, I think Solo's like, okay, I'll take it. Yeah. They almost saved him, but yeah, the overwhelming damage from Crystallize is there. 
14 to 10, 18 minutes in. Less than a 1K lead for Na'Vi. In lane, Pasha quick with the blink jump in. They've got the setup onto General. Pops the hood, he is gonna be held in place. Disruptor's coming He's in He's looking too. to be in quite a bit of trouble. Can this man get out? He's got no mana for the timber chain. And again, lo and behold, it's Solo that's there with the glimpse, dragging General back, and VP claim another. I don't think Navi can fight for the next like 60 seconds now either. He has 44 in stolen. Oh. So they're gonna have to go for some split push. And he's gonna have Sanity's Eclipse back up in 20 seconds. Yeah, yeah you you gotta stay away from that man for a, let's just say a minute. So other nice little interaction that we didn't say is uh, yeah. with Undying and OD, you always have mana to be able to spam Soul Rick when you're pushing. So you have a lot more sustain from that Essence Aura. Yeah. Yeah, as we were saying, VP seem very confident with their draft from, from the camera shots. And we're certainly seeing the, the synergies between these, these heroes. They're just running around as, a big, as this unit a lot of the time. And Ramsey's continuing to get bigger and bigger on the Brute. Yeah. He's got 4k gold. Oh, See where he wants to go if he just want to get the BKB does. Straight up. There we go. BKB's purchased. It's core yeah. versus Sanking. Yeah. Versus Timber. You need that to be able to just really get in the fights and lock someone down. I mean, that's the thing. Yeah. Best of luck, really, to the Shadow Shaman in these fights now. Yeah. If that spider sees you. Navi is smoked up. They're looking for an opportunity. It's going to be solo. Here we go. That's the one. Solo will take it for the team. TP will be cancelled. Ramsey says oh knows that there's no just, way they can turn that. Up. Just typical solo. It's it's solo. I mean that's the that's the problem though for Navi. They they are only getting solo. They want to get something bigger, and uh, they are looking to make an aggressive play here as they wrap around into VP South. They know that they've got the numbers. Oh, the spike carapace though, turning up onto Crystallize with the sanities. They'll get him. Roger comes in with the epicenter onto two. The, the defensive astral buying some time. Ramsey just pops the BKB, turns towards Roger. General will get out of there, but again, this is Navi trying to force some sort of a play. I mean, they, they get past you, but it costs them their carry's life. I mean, again, that was just beautiful setup. There was the spike carapace onto the Shikuchi with that sentry down, setting up the instant stun onto Crystallize, and there was no no escape route for that Weaver then. Yep, perfectly executed by Pasha there. Bottom now, though. They're looking to try to get aggressive here on no one. They need something big, Navi. This could be it. He's got that Hurricane Pike to jump himself back. They're actually going to turn towards a different target. They found Lil on the side. It's an easier one. No one's actually heading forward into the midst of this one. I mean, Na'Vi, even though they have the numbers, they're scared. And understandably so, this OD is very, very large, and Ramsey's no one. Quickly dispatch of Suneko, left behind on the sidelines. Yeah, VP's going to know there's a ward up there now, too, just because of the invasion that happened over and over again. So we'll see. Oh, VP, uh, Solo, walk over. He's like, all right, I'm going to try. I'm going to deward these. And he will be able to get them. Dendi. Trying to close the gap on him. Dendi did take the trap damage as well, as we've yeah. been seeing most players do. And VP back into the pit as well. Yeah. Don't have any uh, TA traps in there at the moment, so Na'Vi may be, may be unaware of this. Dendi's trying to push in this bottom lane. Pasha's got eyes on him. And oh no, Dendi's trying for the TP. Pasha says, no sir, you're staying down here. Quick with the stun, gets himself away. That's going to mean it's very hard for Dendi to get this fight. Roger, though, still decides to jump in. A sentry's down, and that's the SK gone. With the Thunderstrike onto General, he's got to be careful of any sort of catch play that Solo wants to go for. He does have Glimpse and the Static Storm. He has all the catch in the world. He tries to get out with the Timber Chain. It's not going to happen. He does have the Ghost Scepter, but a further stun from Pasha holds him in place. Do they have the damage with the Hurricane Pike? Those orbs flying through global range with that Hurricane Pike. And the vision from the Thunderstrike, another interaction we didn't talk about, but it's so with, beautiful. With Hurricane Pike, yeah, yeah, it can be really nice. Navi's uh, starting to get kind of split up a lot over here. That was, I mean, Posh has been perfect with his positioning in this game uh, as an excess. And yeah. You see his net worth, he's only 6,300, and he's like the safe lane Nyx, but his he's impact. absolutely having a massive impact. Yeah. No doubt about that at all. And indeed, with that, that kill going on, VP find the space. Get the Rosham, Ramses has the Aegis up Pasha. top. Again, let's see if he can get out of this one. He cannot. So Na'Vi, this time with their own sentry play, will find some. They'll actually look towards Lil. Can they get anything more out of this with the Serpent Wars down as well? Lil taking a lot of damage. He's got the Soul Repeal. Crystallize does want to chase, but it's ever so hard with Ramses there. Making sure that Lil will get out. So they do catch that pesky, pesky Nyx Assassin. That was pretty funny, though. They throw a scan, and that's why Pasha went there, because the scan hits on the heroes up in the top left. So he walks in, but it was a trap. The sentry ward was down from Suneko, and they were able to grab Pasha. So we see the line drawn by VP. This bottom lane is annoying for them. They have to be able to try to push it out somehow. Yeah. But Dendi's laying the traps down. He has the, what we want to call the, 
the, the mines, the new TA mines. I mean, the traps all along the line. It is lane. a pretty crazy amount of damage. Yeah. That's for sure. Mid lane, general. Jumps in. We've seen this before. Got the control. Do they have the damage? I mean, he is, he's getting to the point where it's quite a bit of an issue. Still got glimpse. That's so much cat. Look at that. <laughs> the orbs as well, changing direction as he gets glimpse back. It's brilliant. And this is what we talked about is yeah. the. The Timbersaw versus OD matchup, it's yeah. so hard to play Timber in this game. Like, you see his itemization, he's like, I don't really... It's like, he's like, I don't know what to get. He's got a hood, he's got a Vanguard, oh, bottom down, lane. Bottom, Roger. Bye bye, Roger. He's there, no one will take the kill. Leave with that Astral damage. More for the OD. Monster kill already for no one. 9, 1, and 6. This, so. I mean, this game is looking to be becoming very hard for now. Be sure it's just a, a 1k lead that VP have, but the way that they're playing and making these moves, it's... It's, it's going to be very hard for Navi to come back into it. Dendi's doing his best, though. You've got to give credit to him. He's constantly finding the space to push out these lanes. He's keeping himself safe for the most most part of it. And he's closing in on the BKB. He just keeps throwing traps down and killing the wave. Look, he's going to cut this wave right here behind them. So he's going to set off Look one trap. He didn't do it. Oh, the, ne the next, oh, one. next Let's go one. for the next one. Here we go. No, he's looking. No, he's, <laughs> he's busy. He's, 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 no, he's got another trap. He's got another trap. It's the next one. <laughs> Third time lucky. This trap. He's looking elsewhere, man. He's focused. No, 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 no. Dendi's got this. All right, he doesn't need those creeps anyway. He'll get, like get them later, you know, when they come to the tower. He was setting the traps up, so it did look like he was going to try to cut the wave there a bit. But the rest of Navi, they do poor bottom. They are trying to set up here. All of VP is at the ready, though. I mean, because like, he, he didn't cut that creep where they do have this push. I mean, sure, it doesn't really matter for the tier one, but maybe that they can try for a, a tier two as well. They've got the glimpse. Again, solo, quick with the setup. The stun's there, holding back general. And when will this man stop making plays like this? I don't think anytime soon. Solo's disruptor may become a thing that we don't get to enjoy that much more in this tournament if he continues to play as he is this game as... I believe there's every reason for teams to be very scared of going against it. Bottom the lane. Oh, there's the jump in. The stun, but Roger, he kind of has to back out. They've got the glimpse back onto him. He's trying to get out of there. Ramses has been turned upon by Dendi, but now Ramses, he just pops the BKB and he chases down Dendi himself. He's forcing this TA back. They've got the Thunderstrike down. Dendi continuing to try and run himself away, but the refraction's gone off. VP claim another life. Soneko turns with a quick hex onto Solo, but they're not even going to kill Solo this time. Oh, Ramsey's just continues to chase him, grabs the double kill. And VP's power and aggression really coming together at a point where it seems that Na'Vi are struggling to keep up with it. Crystallize, he will find Solo. But now VP know where that man is. I've got General coming back in, and looks like without the Disruptor, they need to back up. Ramsey's trying to keep himself alive with the life steal. He's got the Aegis. Pasha turns. Let's find the stun onto Crystallite, in fact, oh, with that mana burn, Crystallite low on the mana, all the stick charges, allowing him just enough to Shikuchi away. So he'll get out, Roger, being held in place by the Astral, Lil, Ramses, and Pasha ready to surround him, and they will burst him down. Roger gone as well. That was like the key fight for Na'Vi to try to win too, because the OD ported top to fight the Weaver. Weaver actually had to use the BKB defensively to try to save himself versus no one, but that's a 4v4 four, four kind of in a way for Na'Vi, and they tried to get an yeah. advantage but missing out on General's damage and just unable to deal with this Broodmother. Now we have a full Nullifier finished up on Ramses. Oh. I mean, that is... That's going to be great for us to beat. Yeah, this is the thing. Denny's still not quite got his BKB, but when he does, if he's not quick with it, it's gonna it be, may not even matter. It's going to be great versus the BKBs. It's yep. going to be incredibly good versus the Ghost Scepter on Seneco as well as the Ghost Scepter on Timber and Bottom. Oh. You can't come near this tower, Seneco. No, sorry. He tried to go for a bit of a D push with the the shock damage, but VP at this stage looking to just absolutely handle Na'Vi. 27 minutes, 5k lead. It's, it's racking up quicker and quicker, and now they're looking for the high ground. There's the jump. No one he's found. And Roger hiding in the tree line. Pasha comes in. Perfect timing with the follow up stun, and that's the Sand King down. Na'Vi now two members down. Very few ways they can go about trying to hold this. It's as no cool. one feeling very confident. It's getting pretty out of hand here. Oh, he's got a complete Yeshiva's guard as yeah. well. This is VP at their finest. They look towards Crystallize. He pops the BKB, looks towards Ramses, but Ramses with his own BKB and ult. Heals back up to full, turns towards Dendi. There's the nullifier, setting up for the glimpse back. They've got the control. Dendi's down. Sanity's Eclipse is dropped. And Dendi now for a full minute. That was the fresh BKB delivered by Dendi too, and he just gets nullified and can't yep. pop it. I think at this point, 
Na'Vi are going to rely on VP making some very heavy mistakes, but VP do not look like they turned up to make any sort of mistakes at all today with this sort of a performance. They'll get the full set of racks down bottom. Easy lane for VP to clean up. And look at this. Everyone's full man on the side of VP. So and they're they ready to go going. back in. They are indeed. That aura from no one doing absolutely everything. They've got the lockdown onto the Weaver. He can't even Shikuchi away. Crystallize is gone. The supports do nothing. The cores do nothing of Na'Vi now. I think that's that might just be the game, to be honest. They're still like the uh, outer tier two towers, but it's looking like Na'Vi just can't take fights into this VP lineup. Not at all. They're, everybody on VP is full health because they not only have the Soul Rip plus the Essence Aura, but they also have the Spirit Vessel as well on top of the Undying. And now with this Nullifier, the Weaver's BKB was on cooldown that last time, but we see the damage of what it can do versus those items that you need for the fights for Na'Vi. And look at this. Oh dear. Let's look at the green look dots. Look at the green dots. The green dots compared to the orange dots. There's many green dots, Owen. That's, yeah, you don't need to be a dot expert to work that one out. I see what you did there. 31 to 15. I mean, VP, as, as we were saying, you know, they look confident in the draft. Yeah. And uh, we're, we're seeing why. These guys, they... They knew what to bring to the table. They had a strat. They've laid it out. And I think already a lot of the other teams in the tournament will be looking at this game and going, right, if we play against VP, we've got to, we've got to have a note what they did here because this has been almost clinical. Sure, at the start, it was, a, you know, Na'Vi themselves, they were having good beginnings. They were finding farm elsewhere. But the, the overall sort of arc of this game has been that VP know exactly what they want to do. And Na'Vi are a little bit Roger. all over the place as they go out one by one. Again, um, Pasha and Solo have just found kill after kill yep. after kill all over the map. They're always there to set up for it. And because of that, Ramses and no one have just had all the space in the world this game. Yep. There's no doubt about it. Lil's been there having fun on the Undying, uh, but definitely the, the setup, as you say, from Solo and Pasha has been outstanding in this game. Like 11 1 and 11 on no one, 11 0 and 8 on Ramses. Those are the two main cores having the dream game. Everybody else just has a massive amount of assists to their names. 17 assists on Pasha, 15 on Lil, and then Solo, of course, with 19 leading the board for his team on those assists. So Ramsey's now going to have a full butterfly finished up on top of that Nullifier Deso BKB. He is absolutely terrifying, and no one almost finishing up that one defensive item he will have on top of the Blink or the Hurricane Pike. That BKB will make him pretty much unkillable on that uh, World Devourer. Butterfly and Ramses, they're just going lane to lane. Yep. Getting those objectives, cleaning them up. And Na'Vi, they have to do something like this. This is the only way you can turn this game around. Go for this five-man smoke. Hope for the sort of miracle play if they can find it. It's a big if, though. And even if they get a perfect jump, it's still questionable if they actually kill any of these cores in time. And VP. Positioning. They know this they is know. happening. Yep. They don't see anybody on the map. Look at them positioning themselves on the high ground. And look at the itemization by VP as well. Go Scepter on Undying. Go Scepter on Solo. Go Scepter on Pasha. So they already are handling the Weaver and TA problem, that if there was one, from the physical damage, because you can't purge that off anymore unless you have a nullifier. And Na'Vi, they, they have to stick as five. Yep. Whether it be you know just finding farm for Dendi or, or getting any sort of objective done. VPR into the pit, but look at their position. They don't need everyone in there. They they can keep their cores other than Ramsey's outside and just ready to jump in if Navi try and make any sort of a play. And, and the, this is sort of the dilemma. Navi, they have to make some sort of a play outside the base. And look, at otherwise that. it's game over. But if they do, it, it's probably game over anyway. Yeah. And look with the flesh golem amp damage from Ramsey's or from uh, Lil. Ramsey's can spring that down without even having to use Mask of Madness, without having to use Insatiable Hunger, and now they're just ready to battle. Cheese on Broodmother, Aegis on OD. Get the lanes pushed into a better into a better favor, and then they're going to go to pick fights and close it out. Na'Vi. Definitely just holding on for that. Any sort of opportunity that's, that's given to them to catch VP off guard, but VP are not letting their guard down at all. Nope. They're now going to group up, take out this top tower, and I don't, I don't see Na'Vi fighting this. I don't see they, that they can. I think they're just going to lose this tower. Then the base is going to be threatened, and I, I don't know. I really don't see how they can take the fight versus VP's 18k advantage. It is so substantial. 
we'll see how they can stop this push up top. If they can. It's... Maybe they kill Solo again. Maybe they kill, yeah, maybe they might kill Solo, but the rest of these guys, they're pretty, they're pretty tough. You know, sort of suck it in, just go towards game two, just get the morale kill. Get the captain. Oh, wait, no, Rams the captain. Uh, you never know, they, but they're both draft. Jump in, no one. It's a general. The ghost scepter. Wards are down. So it's the health of the tier three tower. You got the tombstone with the wards. VP, I mean, they know that there's no no need to rush this. They can take this as safe and calculated as they want. Yeah, bottom lane will push in naturally. No. Dendi does have traps all set up, though, so he can close. He can kill the waves pretty quickly, quickly with those, since I think he is level 18, so that this trap damage is quite high. That's a lot. Yeah, look at him setting them up all over the place here. We've got the sentry down, so we'll be able to clean up these traps before they pop off. And now Pasha sees Roger, jumps in, Sanity's Eclipse is down, and so is the Sand King. Roger's gone, no one moving across the sidelines. Dendi trying to hold him off, but at this stage, Dendi does not have the damage to cut through the armor of this Odie with the Shiva's Guard. They have the glimpse back onto Seneco. Seneco goes for a shackle, but the Arcane Orb's already out. Seneco's down. Na'Vi lose two. No one just blinking in aggressively. He knows he can. There's no way that Na'Vi punished this to stun. Will miss, so Dendi able to blink back. BKB popped by Crystallize. He'll look towards Ramses, but he's really doing no damage at all with the evasion from the Butterfly. Ramsey's pretty much invincible, and no one's just moving in for the big kills. Their tap out is too much for Na'Vi now. GG is called. Virtus Pro take game one, and what a treat it is to see VP when they play like this. It's just no flaws at all. They had a plan, they pulled it off, and uh, these, definitely the second half of that game looked like it was an absolute walk in the park for VP. Yeah, it was only like a 1k gold advantage until like the 20, 25 minute mark or so, and then everything just went completely berserk. They found pick after pick after pick, while Navi just couldn't really find anything with them because that's this disruptor, honestly. Solo played Solo out of his mind. Pasha's, Pasha's well. Yeah, they just they did super well. And Ramsey's, even though he was versus a Timber Saw in the lane, he was top net worth the entire time, gets an incredibly early desolator, and he can threaten because then the supports, any supports alone, they just die instantly. But yeah, VP, their movement around the map was just much crisper this time around. Absolutely. And you got to ask yourself, if VP are pulling out sort of this, this confident second pick brood in game one of the major, what other sort of scary strategies do they have up their sleeves? I don't know, but I'm excited for it. I'm hoping that we get some... I, I, we're excited. Some I don't know if the combos. teams that are playing against them are going to be excited. Yeah. We're, we are going to have to see how Na'Vi do adapt their draft in, in game two and uh, have some sort of an answer to these crazy things that VP are bringing to the board. We'll, we'll see you guys very shortly. After this break, don't go anywhere. We'll be back for game two of VP versus Na'Vi.